was never even supposed to be about money. It's just something that kind of happened. Right. And it's most people, you, like no one tells you. What it, when your kids say they want to be an artist or an actor or something, what, what do most parents say? Oh, uh, yeah, there's no an money. Engineer. Become an engineer, yeah. there's no money in that shit, right? Become doctor. And yeah. that was before AI and all this stuff. So it's always been a reality. So I feel like people are just like trying to pick a fight with something that it's like, it's, it's just more of the same. It's more it's of the same shit. Thing. But, uh, but I mean, like going, but kind of touching on the subject, subject, because like, you, yeah. you know, like you said, you're an electrical engineer. I do my own thing. Sane has his own thing. Like we all have our like lives that we go like, why for you? Like, why do you make music? Like, why do you spend your time doing that? Why do you? And then of course, oh. like, I feel like the music video part's an easier part to answer, but like, I feel like the deeper sure. question is why do you make music? Um, Let's see. I'm a huge Dune fan. Yo, 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 everybody. How's it going? It's Tekka Monkey, Log Monkey Logic, number 10. Back at it here with uh, Stormcrow and Space Logic. And you all know me already. How's everybody doing today? I can just tell you that uh, Tekka Monkey just got hung all over your tongue. But yeah, I've been talking you know, you today. pulled through. Yeah, you pulled through. <laughs> That's the good part. You pulled through. My, my so, time is tired today. So yeah, uh, thank you for joining us. And this is our number tenth podcast. And for the number tenth podcast, we have Jim Stormcrow. He, hey everybody. Some people know him, and some will get to know him tonight. And Jim, I'm going to turn platform to you. Just sure. you let us know. Who you are okay all right uh well if you ever need to find me i'll repeat it at the end stormcrow underscore je on most of the platforms that at least i'm active on so x x is the big one for me um i'm a music and video producer uh at least you know during the night time uh, i'm an electrical engineer by day uh but you're not going to hear about uh, anything about that on this podcast so <laughs> um I got into, well, I've been a musician for, you know, since about 13 years old, and I'm not exactly 13 anymore. Uh, got into music heavily, I'd say about, yeah, it was 2020. It was it was by the time the pandemic was in full swing, uh, somewhere around November of that time. I said, oh my God, I've been, I've been flirting with uh, trying to learn how to produce music my whole life here. You know, I played in cover bands and stuff like that. And I had a digital recorder when I was younger, um, you know, the first the first generation of digital recorders. And I said, oh, OK, I'm going to just like pick a DAW because I've been l learning about this stuff or like l looking at it on YouTube for years. And I said, I'm going to pick a DAW. I'm going to start learning how to produce music and I'm just going to use it every day. At the time, with my day job and, us, you know, everyone being at home, I was at the office every day and there was not eight hours worth of work to do. So I put in a minimum of one hour every day on uh, FL Studio and did that for a couple of years. And honestly, it was more like a minimum of three hours a day, if not more. <laughs> um, and there was, there was something about right before I got to uh, releasing my first single that next February of 21, I said, I'm going to make myself a promise. Every major piece of music I release i'm gonna do a music video for no matter how good or bad it is i i said if if i have something really significant to say with a single because we're not we're not gonna pump an album at a time out this is no there's no way i can do it with the family and kids and all that um i'm gonna make a music video for each one so the whole reason i'm mentioning that is because it obviously factors in that eventually ai came along and I struggled through doing my first two or three videos. It was it was a great time. I mean, I had I had an awesome time making my you know my first two. They were completely, let's call it analog. <laughs> um, but um, it, it was a fun experience. But it was a long time. Uh, my first well, Halloween's here, and Fillmore's going to kick it off. 
I started working on this back in February as a little tribute to anyone who's had great video game music stuck in their head since childhood. First two videos, uh, I think, you know, I spent two months working on one, uh, three or four months working on another one. It's it was it was be and there was a lot of time spent in it. Then uh, Mid Journey was around version three, and I and I, you know, I took a break from doing anything music in in that August. I think that was what August the twenty one about, and I I said, oh my god, I know what this thing is doing. I know I knew enough technically to kind of figure out, oh. Wait, if it's this good now and it just came out, <laughs> imagine what it's going to be like in X number of months. Or, and you know, we're we're here. We're already yeah. we're already way past what I was imagining anyway. And it was it was usable within a couple months uh, to at least you know, uh, argu arguably the third video I put out was uh, still images animated for Mid Journey version three and four, and. Uh, I've, I've been hooked ever since <laughs> um, in trying to integrate AI every time I do a music video. Um, and both of the the music and the, and the video po portion of it, they're now competing with each other. And also I've just broken the format because, okay, uh, I don't, I don't have to put out a, a genuine bonafide single every time I put a piece of music out now, or I don't have to put out a full video just start doing a shotgun, start throwing a bowl of spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks. So uh, let's see off the top of my head. We've been, I've been doing this for another, about two years now. Is it two and a half yeah. years? Holy crap. Yeah, man. I, yeah. I, I can't I believe that. Three, talking yeah. About. yeah. I think you're almost on three years of doing this pretty consistently. Wow. So, I mean, it, uh, with the, with all this AI stuff going on, time's been flying. And yeah. I've been having a great time doing it. And then every time a new tool comes along, you, you can decide whether you want to stop and take a look at it or let that one go by. <laughs> yeah. And, um, well, at least what got us all here is normal yeah. frame. Yeah, and that's, that's, that is very true. That is very I'm, true. I got the squirrel shirt on today, right? Um, yeah. So what was that? I think I... Let's see. The good story for me with Neural Frames is I put out a video that um, the creator Dilbert Scott Adams, I guess you guys are at least both familiar with him, yeah, right? Yeah, I was actually going to bring up Scott Adams during this. It was one of my questions for you, but go ahead. Yes. Oh, okay, good. Well, we, we'll, we'll fill out whatever you need, right? Um, I'm a big fan of his. I started uh, trying to do talent stacking. One of his, I, one of his uh, concepts that he likes to push on people is that you know, the, you're more valuable every time you add a single little talent to your stack. So what is all this music production stuff or audio and video production stuff and all these AI tools? Each little tool that comes out is a piece for your talent stack. So I heard him drumming uh, one day, uh, I think it was last November, and he shared it with all his followers. He said, hey, this is actually unusually good here. Let's uh, let's uh, you know, let me let me show you guys what I was drumming on. And he says, I don't even know what meter it's in. It, it was a 6-4 beat, which, you know, a little uncommon, right? And I said, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's a song right there. That whole thing. drum kit just start playing around and you don't know how I'm at the beginner level of drumming skill. Suddenly something started coming out of my drumming that almost didn't feel like it came from me because it was way better than I know how to drum. <laughs> so when it started I thought it's above my ability and I seem to be able to do it. And I'm not talking like a little bit above my ability. It was more like twice as good as my current ability. So much so that I don't think I could do it if I sat down to try it right now. Hey, 
pacing and leading. Something happened. Pacing and leading. Almost magical. Pacing and leading. Felt like the divine. Pacing and leading. Channeling through me for a moment. Pacing and leading. Something happened. Pacing and leading. Almost magical. Pacing and leading. That whole thing's a song. And he says, I called my composition Pacing and Leading. So I was like, oh, wait a minute. Let me make a demo out of this. So in a, in one hour, I put together like a two-minute demo of the song with his drum beat and just put some synthesizer under it and threw some mid-journey images, put a little zoom on them, put a couple filters on them in Fil Filmora, made a demo in about an hour, showed it to him, well, posted it on X and, you know, linked them up. And then the next day, he's like, oh, my God, this is amazing. And he played it for his audience. And there was a great response from it. And I said, okay, fine. If you like that, the single is coming out next week. And I said, holy, holy crap, I got to make a single by next week. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I knew enough from executing little stuff um, before then to know that, Okay, no, I already have enough. Uh, I have enough base material here. I can I can do a single in a week out of this. He liked this party, you know. He uh, they didn't have any feedback for what they didn't like. So I said, I'll just I'll just take this minute and a half, make it three minutes, and I'll I'll have him speaking, and it'll be fun. I made that. It came out great. The uh, pacing and leading single. Oh, so. Find me on Spotify, Pacing and Leading, featuring yeah, Scott no, Adams, right? Yeah, the, the YouTube video is amazing, too. That's actually what made me, like, discover you the first time. Really? I saw no, you... wait a minute. Well, that, yeah, that's... because we chatted a little bit in the neural frames. Like, I would see you come up, and I saw some other sure. things you're posting, but then you posted that, and I, like, stopped. I was like, yo, what oh, the yeah, fuck man. is this? Like, yeah, no, for real. No, I'm not joking. That's why I was going to ask you about Scott Adams. I was like, who the heck is Scott Adams, actually? Like, oh, okay. Man? Because that's, that was amazing, that collaboration. And I've, I've DM'd you about some of your, a lot of your music, actually, um, that I've been kind of going through. So, Jim, is that yeah. the video I'm thinking you're talking about is something magical just happened? Yeah, you got it. You got it. That's one of the All things, right. the, the, the re repetitive uh, thing in the chorus. Well, yeah, the, I'm gonna... the message of that song is so, like, deep to me because, like, it starts off, and I haven't even listened to it recently. I just have it burned in my memory where he's like, I was awesome. drumming. And, you know, then all of a sudden it didn't even feel like me anymore. Like what was happening didn't feel like I was able to do this, but I was doing it like something yes, along those exactly. lines, right? Like I'm not saying it verbatim, but like that's like the mess. And dude, that no, like, you got it. You got it. Resonates with me very heavily because I feel like that all the time when I'm doing anything like musically, visually, like I just like I get to a point where I stop and I go, did I just pull that off? You know what I mean? Like, oh, there uh, you go. There's the video. Yeah. Yeah, no. I mean, yeah. If you don't mind, we'll we'll, we'll insert insert a lot of your like clips of your songs yeah. and videos and stuff uh, when I do the oh, edit well, for this. Please go for it, man. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so th this is actually the video when I saw the crow sitting in here is why I made the background. Oh, okay. That and that I, you you took off on that idea with it. Yeah. And I, man, I I, I fell in love with uh, your avatar. I was like, man, that is so cool. Oh, thanks, man. I for, I I, for, I forget. I, I I knew I didn't want to be a Jim Esposito because <laughs> but only because there's like Joe Satriani and he's, you know, he's a hero of mine as far as guitar goes and all that. Uh, you know, I played him in the talent show when I was like 17 and stuff like that. Right. Um, but I was like, Oh, I don't, I don't want to be just another J J with an Italian last name. <laughs> so I was like, Oh, I guess I need to take the ultimate, um, you know, the, the ultimate, uh, uh, narcissistic plunge and give myself give myself a moniker. No, so. the Stormcrow is a, definitely a, a viable moniker, definitely. Yeah. Oh well, it it, it works. I love uh, for some reason I love the color scheme I started picking. I was like, I love purple. Wait a minute, I love dark, dark, <laughs> green, light greenish teal, and okay, a little bit of the iridescence, and then I put iridescent in everything I do now. Yeah, that's um, your uh, that's your superhero name. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so that's yeah, Storm Crow's a superhero name now. But um, oh, so I let, let's see where 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 should we pick up on this? Well, going back to to Scott Adams really quick. The oh the yeah, next, yeah, definitely. One of the other big projects he did was the uh, Prisoner Island. Was he in that too, or did am I confusing him with someone else? No, no, you you got it right. So um, because that was also an amazing video that you pulled off a few months after the the other one. Oh, oh, thanks. So I guess to, to wrap up the pacing and leading thing is uh, because you mentioned something about like um, it, it's kind of uh, Scott Adams was describing the flow state. Yeah. Yeah. 
And he is actually not a musician almost at all, besides the, the bit of drumming he's doing. And the uh, to hear him describe it, even though he's so knowledgeable in all these different areas and he's got all this valuable working knowledge of how to handle people and persuade people, and, and he's a master of persuasion, he really is. Um, he's, he's completely alien to music and he like, doesn't like start to get into music when he hears it and like digs on it and stuff like that. Like he'll, he'll recognize it one time around, but he, he self admits that like, no, nah, it doesn't do much for me usually. And I'm just flabbergasted because I'm learning all this stuff from this guy every day on his podcast, right? For years now. And he's kind of in his infancy of learning that music can be persuasive. It can move you. And if you do stuff like music where it's kind of a live thing, he plays tennis, but like you can get into a flow state with just about anything. So it, uh, it it's, it's kind of like, I wanted to show him that, Oh no, you can take your idea right now and you can make this, that little seed. You can, you can blow it away <laughs> with, uh, you, you can blow it out, let's say, and make it into a full blown idea, uh, with just a little bit of effort. So yeah, just in time, dedication, effort, vision, love yep. yeah it even the best um <clears throat> a lot of the um speakers i mean we can we probably think that they've experienced everything but you know as humans there's a lot of things people don't get to experience till to see it somebody shows it to them i mean i see yes. something new every day i mean just with this guy here yeah you know he's man crazy ideas he's like here's a crazy idea and i'm like wow you already thought of that. Okay. Oh, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's, <laughs> and that's, and there's a beauty in it too, because it keeps, you know, the enticement of learning new things, but you just want to have that going for you. But so no, um, one thing I did want to bring up, uh, the style, the way you work through your projects. Sure. Just kind of, kind of like what goes in your mind? What, what, what's, uh, you know, the light bulb that goes out and you're looking at something, a perspective that develops. Kind of just walk us through that. Sure. Um, this is probably a great thing for me to talk about anyway, because I'm always trying to systematize, at least for myself, what I'm doing. Because if you can define a system for what you're doing, making a song, making a music video, making, uh, you know, what what's your starting kernel? What's your starting vector? <laughs> And what do you hope to accomplish and what, what's the straight line path or what kind of path can you take to that? Um, very similar to what you can imagine latent space being if you start with a seed and you say, I want to give me this concept and we're going to direct our way towards this concept as we go through steps on a, on a, on an imaging model, you know, or a diffuser model. Um, so I started out. The best example is to say I've got a music track, a whole music track then that I've all, I already have a story or some kind of three minute story that I want to that I want to illustrate because I've already made the the hopefully powerful music to go along to go along with video. Um, so I usually will start that way. So let's, you know, I, I won't belabor the point of the music, I guess, because no. no. I, 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 I'm less, I'm less well-versed in that, but visually I could tell you, I already got the story in mind. Um, great place to start with that is usually some concept image generation. And that's something we, we, uh, I found myself uh, and others talking a lot about when mid journey version three was out is that I kept on telling people you can become your own storyboard artist now. Yeah. And that was definitely how I thought about it in the beginning. I still do it, but I take it for granted now is that I, I would never have to go to anybody anymore to be like, well, can you give me like images of a hero with a cape and a, and a, a green background and a silhouette? No, that that's exactly like if you get 12 or so terms of, of something about like, well, I got a vision of this and this and that, just enter those 12 terms into a mid-journey prompt and you're off and running. Um, so for most of the music videos I'm doing, I'm generating tons of images whatever my uh, mid journey subscription allows usually um, or in stable diffusion, if I'm feeling cheap that week. Um, and I'm trying to get a couple different themes down. Um, for me, it's usually about 
you know, I'm, I'm, I, I, I know myself by now. I'm gravitating toward color schemes, which right. is why I'm, o- I'm always using heavy color lights on, on stuff. Like the studio is always going to be like this until I get tired of this color. <laughs> um, so, you know, okay, uh, this, this, this quarter of the video, or let's say you need two or three, two or three ideas to like flesh out a song for three minutes. And then if you alternate between the three, that gives, that gives you a whole music video. So that's, that, that's, uh, after two years, I can say that's usually what I'm going for. You know, two, three, four main ideas, concepts, the color scheme or the, um, the heavy elements that will identify to them, them to the, the, the viewer when you're going to be seeing it over the course of three minutes. So I think of it as like, you're going to juggle three balls in the air and show them that you can do this for three minutes. Um, the um, extra pretentious way I like to think about it is that all songs are spells and you're a magician and you yeah. are taking three minutes to cast a spell that at the end it's cast or while you're casting the spell, whoever you're giving the video to is under the effect of the spell. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I, I don't know. That's I, 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 I fucking love it. <laughs> I love thinking <laughs> about stuff like that. Um, so I mean, what what hypnotic trance am I going to put someone in for three minutes? That's that's you know literally the question I'm going to be asking myself when I'm when I'm if I have a uh, heavy enough song that I'm uh, considering making a video for. So there's your concepts, and then moving into the execution phase, I can tell you since I was talking, uh, I was thinking about it a lot this week. I'm going to be putting out a neural frames video. That is a how-to of how I made uh, uh, one of my recent videos. And you've got all those concepts. For example, if I took one concept, one of those four uh, types of shots, say it's all me uh, as a subject in purple. I'm going to take 100 of those images, 50 of those images that I got from um, from mid-journey, put it into, say, a neural frames training. Then run that through for the song all the way through all three minutes and have fun with it. Experiment with the camera angles, do a hard cut, do, do one whole minute of just start up, start on one starting image and just see where it goes. Um, a great example of that is you can see about half of prisoner Island, um, that you mentioned earlier, that second Scott Adams song I did. Um, that's got two or three sequences where, I just sat down one night. I think Deep Surface was on uh, on the community chat on Neural Frames with me, and I just said, "All right, I want to zoom into the prison." And I let I babysat the render for you know twenty minutes. I was there that night for a bit, yeah, Not for all of it. But I popped in for like thirty minutes and watched you. It was really I, cool. I was there for quite a bit too. Yeah, I watched yeah. that too. Okay, well that was that was a really good night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. No, it, was, it, was. It, was, it was dope. I wasn't even trying to be there. I just got stuck watching you. Um, it was oh, okay, really so, oh, good. Uh, so it's it's like it's like I remembered. All right, good. <laughs> so anyway, um, I, I do know a li- uh, cribbing a little bit from what I've picked up a- about movie production or television production, which I, I have zero experience in. Um, is that you need plenty of footage, so some of it can wind on the uh, wind up on the cutting room floor. Yep. So to my point with neural frames, run through neural frames until you've got tons of footage, run through mid journey until you've got tons of stills in case you want to do something for the stills, run it through. So if there's talking, you have your narrators, your speakers. I, I use a lot of spoken word and that's another topic we will cover in a couple minutes, I guess. Um, but I run that through Hey Gen or Eleven Labs um, to make, to give me some B-roll of the people speaking. Or do I want a little narrator in the top corner? Do I want do I want an artificial voice saying something on top of it? Do I want to add a little bit more to the song and post? That sort of thing. Um, but basically use whatever tools are calling to me during that phase. Is it Pika this week? Is it is it runway this week? To animate some of those concepts. Neural frames currently takes the bulk of the work for most videos, right? Um and at the end, you've got this giant mass of stuff you're kind of like holding. And then uh, I started getting in, uh, falling in love with either Fillmore or particularly DaVinci Resolve. 
and that I usually do a ton of post processing. And then once once we got something viable, three minutes long and almost completed, run it through a couple times, uh, do a penultimate draft. Uh, I usually do the the great thing where you name the file like you know the stolen journals final penultimate draft. <laughs> You know, I, know. The same shit. I know what you yeah. mean. <laughs> you know, and, and I got all these cutesy names for shit, and it just is like, okay, well, that's the final one, because I remember that. Um, that last thing is usually a run it through an upscaler. I use Topaz uh, Video AI almost religiously now. Um, I'm in love with 60 frames a second and what it does as a gloss to everything I put out. Um, Resolution's not so much with me because I'm I'm usually on X, so I, I just aim for 1080p usually. Um, and there, I mean, you got you got yourself a video after all, you know, following all those things I just rattled off. Um, but that's a that's pretty typical workflow. That's but yeah, practical. and but here's here's my other question, like, please. So for the viewers, you know, like some people may think like you know this uh with the ai it's expedited the stuff and you know it's just a quick and easy way people both know um we all have seen youtube videos you know the cut and paste the generic ai videos sure, we all see sure. it, right but the ones that actually take the work like give us a approximate um you know time okay. frame that takes you for a project <laughs> yeah yeah um so there's my billable hours if I'm doing a project for somebody, but then there's the time it actually takes to do it. Um, and if I was doing it by the billable hours only, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think I'd be, <laughs> I don't think I'd be ma do many commissions. Um, it usually winds up as a passion project. Uh, almost every single thing I do winds up being like, well, if I if I put the kids to bed early, or if I get <laughs> Mrs. Stormcrow to put them to bed like the, she is tonight. Then maybe I can get about three hours in before I collapse, and I won't be too tired at work tomorrow. Um, so God, I mean, uh, let's see, pacing and leading. I did that in a week, but that is at least, I mean, that's at least twenty hours worth of work, if not more. <laughs> for if you, that if you is want, yeah, if you're leading. just sitting down and doing it, yeah, without. But yeah, that is twenty hours across the time you can extract the hours. On which yes. days. Yeah, and oh, it's definitely smeared on like Vegemite. Yes. Yeah. Um, e e oh, the, yeah. Here's some, here's something worth noting about the whole process, right? Especially with the music, I've got Bluetooth, I've got mm -hmm. a decent stereo in my car, and I've got a half hour commute to and from work every single day, and I've got a lunch break where I take about fifteen minutes to and from the the Panera Bread, right? Um, if I'm working on a piece of music. That piece of music, the rough draft MP3 of whatever, you know, pacing and leading underscore seven. Well, by, you know, when I go into work, it's seven. When I go to lunch, it's eight. When I go to come back, uh, go, go home, it's nine. And it's just the, the, the counter comes up every single time. And I work on it a little bit. I was like, oh, fuck the symbols, the symbols. Got to remember that when I get back to the work, to the job. Um, I am, I'm listening to that music on repeat. Uh, smelling my own f musical farts for hours, and that's it's kind of like found time because yeah, you can't calculate it. Yeah, it's just whenever yeah. you, it's just whenever you have that yeah. moment. See that that yeah. is really good because uh, even the ones uh, you do commission for now they can see like the billable and the actual passion <laughs> you're putting oh, in yeah. to yeah. the work. You know, so no, th that this is just really amazing uh, because. My whole thought process, you know, when I'm thinking of, okay, I've got to write a dialogue or a story sure. and work off of it. I'm looking at the same way. Okay, I have this much time between these two things I'm going to do. And I can think about it at that time, you know, just like do some brainstorm. Yeah, I, I see your pattern. It is exactly the way I do it because, uh, you know, with kids and day job, <laughs> that's how it's done. Yeah, you fit in what you can when you can. Yep. And I, I know what times of day are good for certain things now. Um, you know, at work, I fit in every little thing that I can. But mid-journey is a really easy thing to be like, you know, iridescent glows, raven, purple raven, 
go ahead, do it, you know, and come back and there's 10 things generated, even on slow mode. So um, second question, please. Does yeah. your wife enjoy your music videos? She does, but it's definitely, this is definitely my thing. <laughs> like um, her, her critique on the art form. Oh, she's, uh, she's, she's a smart lady. She knows it. She knows and appreciates that it's it, there, there's work going into it. She knows how much time I'm, I'm either away from her or I'm <laughs> up while she's asleep with the kids, you know. Um, so she's a good supporter. But you know, to 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 get to give you a, a, an idea, uh, I I covered a Joe Satriani song for her when we first met, and it's his one like ballad. It's always with me, always with you, and I gave her a cover of that for like our you know. Uh, our engagement or something like that and she was like oh this is so sweet and then i said well do you want to go see joe satriani with me next summer and next summer rolls around and she's like yeah i want to see him and i took her to joe satriani and the first couple notes that he comes out and he goes let's fucking rock and he dive bomb on the guitar and she's looking at me like oh i i, I thought most of his songs were 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 like like the one you <laughs> made for me i'm like Oh no, honey! Buckle up. We're gonna have a, good, a long couple <laughs> hours here. Oh my god, that's amazing. That's good. That's really good. So I, I think I think that's the best possible uh, service I could give to Mrs. Stormcrow is that uh, she appreciates it, but from afar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I have the same same. I think I can relate very well in that. I mean, she knows uh, I've put a lot of work in it, and mm -hmm. I just. I still try to get a critique because you know it's kind of the the one who just sees it for it, what it is, just seeing it. And oh yes, it's it's objective. Even though she's got right. an attachment to you, it's much yeah. more objective than because than you can get sometimes between you and me, we're gonna love our projects because we are kind of you know molded oh, yeah. into it. So I don't know. It's why but, I call it sniffing your own farts. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I was I was actually gonna comment on that, but I wanted. Go, but that was a very oh no you can let that one go yeah no, no but that is that i like the humility you know like smelling my own farts trying to make it right listen to it but that's really good yeah well, oh, i mean no, it's, it's, it's good to share that stuff with your partners you know because especially when you're married for a long time or something because you know they'll, they'll also tell you when your farts stink you know yes. and, uh, yeah. yes. my wife is very good at that i'll show her something i'll be like isn't this amazing she's like were you drinking when you made this <laughs> Oh, really? like, that's maybe. great <laughs> she's like yeah. yeah you might want to look at it again and i'm like okay fine i'll go back yeah. look at it again oh shit she's right all right let me let me clean this up this is all overblown here <laughs> like <laughs> um but yeah now going back to what i was saying yeah it's great to like have that person to like show things to get that honesty um also to have people like in the no frames community to kind of show that yes. you know, I've, i literally bonded with saint by showing him a bunch of stuff that he said sucked and I thought it was good, right? And it's like, he was sure. like, hey, man, here's all the, here's like 20 songs. You can have them. And he's like, I don't want any of them. And I was like, what do you mean you don't want any of them? And yeah. then we just, we started going back and forth. And he's like, well, you know, this is the kind of things I look for. Like, can you do this? And I was like, well, I never thought about it. I could try. And then I started learning shit, chat GPT, some questions on how to do stuff in my DAW that I never even Perfect. tried to do, you know, like. And just, I'll tell yeah, you one thing, Jim. Every day. He surprised the crap out of me. But when he came with those two tracks and I listened to him, I said, all right, hold on, because I wanted to really pay attention. First run, mm -hmm. second run. I'm like, what did you do? It's <laughs> like you just did a 360. Like, I said, I can't even tell you how good it is. And he, he kind of like uh, went silent for a while. I'm like, oh, my God, what happened? What happened? <laughs> and, but, yeah, he, he really surprised the crap out of me. And I think, I think that was when we really became friends at that time. Sure. Sure. And he actually uh, worked on the white project with, and you know he's been kind of pushing me, and that's become like our project now. It was started me, but now it's our project because oh no, uh, it, creative par creative partnerships are very very helpful. Plus the other thing is we both are born in the same month, so you know we're the Leos, so that's another thing. <laughs> yeah, that's him. Yeah, no, I mean, but it's it's like everybody like I'm meeting, like especially you, Jim, like. Because I told you the other day, like I was, I wasn't even looking at your music videos. I was, I was on YouTube Music or Spotify. I can't remember. And I just like, sure. I just hit shuffle on your playlist, you know, and just hit shuffle. I was like, show me some songs. I'm working, 
And dude, I got distracted. I could not work. I was just like listening to that <laughs> shit. Like right. I was it's like, rude. what the fuck? Um, and I know you it's, it's some of the songs I was listening to were kind of like not older, but not super recent. Um, sure. These days, because I know the answer in the past is probably no, but these days, are you playing more with like the AI music stuff? Because um, I know you don't necessarily need to, right? If that's like, but it's no, more I, like I, valid question, though. Valid question. Um, I'm playing with the AI stuff more because it's getting better, and um, I certainly remember two years ago when uh, you know I, I reference everything to Mid Journey version three because that that was my starting point. So. I'm going to continue to do that throughout this entire thing. That's perfectly um, fine. At the time, I, I saw what they were trying to do with music, and I said, oh, well, this is not ready for anything yet. Compared to what I know, if I could see what they were doing with images, and I said, oh, okay, well, they're going to get there with music. It's just not there yet. And lo and behold, here we are, um, especially since uh, Udio uh, hit the market. Well, not the market, the beta of Udio hit hit the ground. Um, Suno version 3 really started liking it. Even version 2, usable, right? Um, yeah, but no, 3 changed my opinion on all of it. Um, I, I kind of poo-pooed a lot of the AI. Yeah, I, I poo-pooed a lot of the AI stuff until Suno 3, and sure. then I was like, yeah. oh. Yeah, at 2, I was kind of like, okay, yes, you know, it, something exists, you know. But yeah. uh, 3 kind of start, you know, because I could really make ambient music for my video games. Sure, sure. I, um, it's a little equivalent though, where I could tell with, say, you know, Mid Journey wound up being so good with so few knobs and dials that it was usable from almost the start. Whereas, let's say, for instance, Automatic 1111, the Stable Diffusion implementation, I found that pretty usable and it had a lot of knobs for me. But the quality wasn't there for a while, so you know I stuck with Mid Journey. But I loved the fact that oh my god, people are making control nets and people are you know they're doing open pose and they're trying to do video. And I really gravitated towards the forum uh, when it first came out, even though I didn't do much with it. In fact, I'm I'm sitting on stuff for a single that is like it's 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 going to be so fucking great when I finally get it out. <laughs> but but it's an animation I made like two two years ago now that needs to see the light of day because it was in the forum and the forum did such magical things to it. I'm digressing here, but no, I get um, it. I get it. And I'm glad that you haven't yeah. like given up on those things. You know, um, I feel like we live oh, in an age backlog. where, well, no, but that's amazing. Like, I feel like we live in an age where people are like, if it's not like right in front of them that week, they like move on, forget about it, throw it in the trash, like never think about it again. Like it has to be like the, the front and center stuff always, you know, and it's like, no, you can work well, on something that's a year old, you know, like, why not? Like, oh, I've, been no. working on a video game. I've been working on a video game now for like four years since 2020, since the pandemic. Video game I development imagine. was my, uh, was my pandemic project. I started getting into it, learning how to do it and stuff like that with Unity, Unreal, all that, all that BS. Oh, well, um, it should see the light of day eventually. You know that, right? This year, man. This year, I swear. Good. Good. I right, now I want to hear more about it later, too. <laughs> see, yeah, um, him being on the edge of the Gen Z and the millennials, he calls himself a zillennial. I don't yeah. know how you remember. That. Yeah, yeah, I'm Daniel, that's me too. I'm a zillennial. Yeah, so I'm a zillennial. <laughs> for me, for me, like um, for the past, before the AI, past probably 10, 15 years, it was like a plateau in technology. It was just getting refined, nothing really, <laughs> you know, like where we're like growing up in the 80s and 90s, like you were like, ooh, Oz, you know, tech was just really showing some stuff and you'll be like wow man this is now happening this is not happening oh. everything just kind of plateaued but after a AI while it came too. out yeah the ai it kind of completely had me make a u-turn towards sure. it sure i mean it's literally the ooh and the ah like really <laughs> you know but you know what i've been thinking about a lot recently do you think if this stuff came out 10 years ago it would have been this impactful as it is no. today. It, it would have at by now it would have been something else that's the whole thing it it it, the, it would have happened differently because yeah. so I, I was about to to comment on that because uh over 10 years ago now 3d printing got big mm -hmm. and 3d printing got big for a number of reasons one the big one was the patent expired 
So all of a sudden it was open open season. But also we finally had Raspberry Pis and Arduinos that could do all these little these little um computations that were you know semi expensive computations, but enough where a thirty dollar computer could do it. And it was commoditized. The stepper motors were commoditized from China. Every little part you could build this stuff out of junk. You know, not literal junk, but some of it was. Almost. Um and that proliferated because of that. And I joined a 3D printer group that was going strong for like six years. We met monthly for it. The thing that, you know, and it eventually petered out. The whole point of me mentioning that being the thing that made me call my co-host for the 3D printer meetings and say, Ben, did you see this? Was mid-journey and AI coming out and, and really hitting hard. And we got, uh, for a couple months, I had an AI meetup going. Um, it, it, it came along and it's like, oh my God, this is like when people were on the early days of Usenet or email. And that, that's the feel, that's the feeling. It's still here. It's two years later and it still feels like we're riding a wave. Would you, no, we, would we you really agree are. Agree? I, I literally just read an article last night saying that over 50% of just Americans, dude, which Americans, as you know, have access to everything and over 50% of Americans have never even heard of GPT. Anything AI stuff, and then the uh, the rest the rest of that percentage only used it maybe once or twice, just dicked around for like a second, and then never used it again for yeah. this last like two years. You know what I mean? So yeah, dude, there are people really don't understand right now. I'm doing my best. I mean, we all are. We're all like little, uh, you know, like preachers that knock oh, on everybody's door. The prophets. So, the yeah, prophets you know, will. like yeah, <laughs> the twelve apostles are forming. No. And, yeah. But so, for real, that's how it feels. My whole group, like you know, family, friends, and everybody, even my cousins, they are not. I mean, the way I see GPT, AI, and everything, they have no clue. No. Oh, and yeah. I'm just talking about my major, you know, like, and they're not, like, not in tune with the technology, you know, what's new and what's flinging and whatnot. But, yeah, it's amazing. Uh, we think, like, everybody knows, but really, they don't. No, we're in, we're in a bubble, but it's a, it's a pretty self-aware bubble. Oh, no, I like the bubble. Yeah, me too. Like, oh, it's, it's like, <laughs> yeah. but it's like anything. Just like you were just talking, bro. It's like, it's any emergent technology. It's any emergent trend. Any emergent like thing, right? Like because you know, like early days of uh, EDM or something or dubstep, right? That was the same thing. Like it was a very small group of people who thought it was cool. Most people were like, <laughs> literally me when I was a kid. I poo pooed it because I was such a classical boy. I liked the classical music so much. Sure. My friends would show me dubstep, and I was like, they're not using real instruments. Why would I care about this? Like, there's no violin. No, it sounds like an oscillator went haywire on you. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, why would I care about this? And then here I am, like, making my own dub stuff now. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> no, I, I get it. I get it. But that's how um, AI is going to be for people. It's like they're they're kind of like don't know what to think about it now, and then, you know, they're going to be all up on it pretty soon here. Oh, well, well, here's a, here's another thing. I got into computers through my father way back, like 1987, 88, and I got introduced to the DOS prompt. And yeah. then Windows 3.1 came out, and then we got Windows 3.1. But I was still launching stuff from DOS. You know, I played X-Wing. <laughs> um, oh, wow. Nice. The, the entire concept of the fact that you're technically starting on something that isn't graphical is, yeah. you know, uh, that's, a, that's a boost for people that started with it. Because they'll always know inherently that, oh, this is a file system that's right. laid on top of this machine that I don't know what it's doing. Well, fine, but like you, you at least get introduced to the level of abstraction, abstraction that you have here. It's like, oh, the file re re explorer icon represents things. You know, it's not just oh, these are files. It's it gives you a little bit of chance to get deeper with it, I guess. Well, if you're adopting this stuff early, you get all that stuff baked in to your head when new things come out. Now, sure, it primes you to think of stuff differently when it comes out, but overall, I mean, it's. Uh, I think it's an overwhelming advantage that you, it you is. put a little seat time in here with this stuff. Yeah, it's kind of hard, kind of hard for me to even put in words. I mean, because I'm only looking at the potential of my case use, right? Sure. And everybody else is looking at their case use. So yeah, it's. I was at work solving issues with it. <laughs> yeah, already. And then and 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 my the guys are like, how did you figure that out? <laughs> I said, I'll tell you later. Not, yeah, very, it was, I, it was pretty cool. I, like, I, 
No, it works. Same thing, dude. I'm very o open about it for years. I've been using the GPT stuff since like 2017 when it was like horrible, horrible. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, no, dude. I used it when it was trash, but I loved. I thought it was so magical. Like I used to play this thing called AI Dungeon back in like 2017, 2018, and you would play like you. It was GPT. It was ChatGPT basically, but like. Okay. You would write like story, like a like a prompt of a story, not even a full prompt, just like a like a sentence, like an action, like D and D, like yeah. oh, I walk through the door, and then the AI would respond to you, oh, there's a secret agent like in that car over there, and then you go, oh, I I pull up my gun, and then it just responds, and it's just uh, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and I was like, and it was horrible, it wasn't even good, I was in love with it, dude, I could not oh, yeah. believe my eyes, so I've just ever since then I've just constantly been pushing it, I've literally been like progressing at my company because of this stuff, I have no degree. You mentioned no, yes. No, no business doing this type of stuff. But it's like I wish I could just do the art stuff, of course. But I mean, even if you leave the art world, the potentials to just get things done is like oh, it's for the time forward. being. You should you should stick on that and keep on riding that horse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, that, no, that mean, is great for you. I literally am just like I am in the art communities. When I go to work, I'm I'm the same person. I literally go, hey, have you heard of AI? Have you tried using it for emails? Have you tried using it to read your emails and maybe understand a problem that yeah. you know would take you maybe 30 minutes to read all of that? You could just like pop it into Copilot and uh, which is our approved GPT, and then uh, you know just get that stuff kind of summarized for you in bullet points. You know exactly what to do. You know exactly what the question is. Who who asked it? Who who caused the problem? Maybe you know what I mean? Like it's insane. But it's but just to be honest with you, it's hard to get people on board. It's been like oh, no. if, season, if, if they're not willing, they're not going to do it. They have to decide that they want to do it. I've been it's been happening more every day, a little good, bit of, a little bit of time. But it's it's I've literally been working at it for like two years straight, trying to get people aware of it. Yeah, I'm I'm done trying to get three uh, people into 3D printing anymore. <laughs> um, you That's know, my co my cousin harder. has an unused machine. My my nephew has an unused machine. It's like. Well, Send I have a new machine too. So Send it to me. I'll use it. I'll, I'll come up with projects. I, I we'll do soldering and stuff. I, I don't know. I'm always doing weird shit. 3D <laughs> printing is great. I yeah. have friends who do it. Um, I have some minis from 3D printing. Not, I, I, I'll actually stop preaching about it, but I will disprove what they don't know about the AI and the workflow. That I'm ready to do, but preaching, I'm too busy for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean... I think out of all the communities, musicians are definitely the most like combative right now towards it. Um, art, artists oh, I could see that. are combative, right? But like, I always make the joke that like, yeah, you know, the AI artists might be stealing your art job, but you were starving already. Like, you aren't making money as an artist, dog. Don't fool, don't try to fool anybody. Like, most artists <laughs> don't make money. That's how it is. Okay, so AI coming along, what money was there? Honestly, dude, like, not much, right? Um, you know what? So, whatever but with music it's a little bit different and you know people are getting very like it's it's getting hot right now in the music world because now they're threatened I've noticed. a couple of years ago they looked at it they were it was easy to say it wasn't good now it's hard to say it's not good now you have to kind of lie so, you know epidemic yeah. sound is one of uh the biggest uh well you know subscriptions like people use on youtube for their background music and you know using uh royalty free music if you have a subscription because they're yeah. kind of like the yeah. license holder the indie artists in there by the stacks, mm -hmm. they are not making that much money. You know, they have their songs no, in there. The company is making money. Exactly. Yes. And yes. and and that music is like prime quality. I mean, I I can literally at this point find any kind of track I need for sure. the mood I'm going for, right? So when I look mm -hmm. at that and I'm like you're afraid of Suno while in reality, like music right now, people, anybody making music is really at the mercy of these big companies. If oh, it hasn't wanted, changed. Yeah, it, yeah, it, has, it has not changed. I don't changed. see it changing, you know. But it, I don't know. You know, the, that fight is kind of like, it's it's one that, is, I don't know, I don't see it relative. Well, yeah, I, it goes back to what I was saying. It's like art was never even supposed to be about money. It's just something that kind of happened. Right. And it's, most people, you, like, no one tells you. what it, When your kids say they want to be an artist or an actor or something, what, what do most parents say? Oh, uh, there's no money. Engineer. Become an engineer, yeah. there's no money in that shit, right? Become doctor. And yeah. that was before AI and all this stuff. So it's always been a reality. So I feel like people are just, like, trying to pick a fight with something that it's, like, it's, it's just more of the is, same. It's more it's of the more same the shit. Same. But, uh, but I mean, like, going, but kind of touching on the subject, because, subject, like, yeah. you know, like you said, you're an electrical engineer. I do my own thing. Sane has his own thing. Like, we all have our, like, lives that we go, like, why, 
for you, like, why do you make music? Like, why do you spend your time doing that? Why do you? And then, of course, oh. like, I feel like the music video part's an easier part to answer, but like, I feel like the deeper sure. question is, why do you make music? Um, let's see. I'm a huge Dune fan. Like, very large Dune fan. Me too. Me too. Um, and I want to tell those stories. And Warner Brothers, don't shoot me. Um, I I am so in love with the six books by Frank Herbert that it's literally helping me express myself to be able to try to tell those stories. And I have the convenient affliction of liking the fourth book, which is the God Emperor of Dune. And it's the one that, you know, I think if uh, Denis Villeneuve uh, keeps on making Dune movies, there's a still a good chance he'll stop at Children of Dune and not, and not go to the fourth book. Because we're talking about a god emperor that's a space worm, you know? And like Idaho can make women orgasm just by being a fucking dope. You saw that meme too? Yeah, yeah, great. I read it. Yeah. I read the oh, I read, no, I read, I read yeah, that part of the book. I literally had to reread it three times being like, is that, that, is that what Frank Herbert just wrote right now? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, oh, yeah, the horny space nuns versus the chase space nuns. Yes, I know. Yeah. Um, But I for some reason, th that, that book the the entire series i mean i'm in my um hum, humble brag you know like seventh or eighth read through of right now of the entire series like I, I i i live and breathe this for some reason i feel like it's almost like a guide of it's almost like a religion a way to live almost like no dude frank herbert I, was uh it, we can, he was we talking to something else frank herbert podcast real fast dude because yeah exa exactly he was on yeah. another level man dude so, for the time in the time he wrote that book it was like way ahead. Oh, yes. And now, even now when you read it, you're kind of like, oh, makes sense now. And you know what? The funny thing is, I was having that talk with a buddy of mine at work about yeah. the fourth book. And we were talking this exact topic. It's like, you know what? I don't think he's going to do that. That's That one's not going to happen. It's gonna it's, stop. It's gonna be tough. The the further they go, the more esoteric they get. I'm yeah, I'm feeling someone's description, but that's it's gonna that's be exactly it. it's gonna be hard just to make the the Dune Messiah the second one. Like that's already <laughs> touching on a lot. You know what I mean? With like Alita and everything that goes down with her, his sister. You know what I mean? Like, oh, well, it's, it's it's weird. Uh, it's same. weird shit. You know? It's weird. Yeah, I love it. No, dude. I, oh no, I, I'm, I tell, I'm all I, about people, it. But... <laughs> people always make fun of me for how much I reference Dune in normal conversations because. Frank Herbert really did pull from like every religion when writing that book, right? And from like yeah. uh, every history book. So that's why it resonates so heavily. So to, I guess to the point is that I hit, I hit on something in myself of, I started making music and I was reading, you know, God Emperor a lot. And also, and, and this is in all seriousness. I know we talk a lot about, oh, the politics of today or, you know, things are so crazy and everyone feels like they're living in end times, but, to see what was going on with society and I could at least, you know, with a straight face, tell you now how much we've been manipulated as a society, as people over the past, you know, three, four years, at least that all the lessons about government and leaders and power and persuasion. And I'll just, I could go on and on. It's all there, especially not only in the story, but it's almost calling to me to make songs yeah. about every um one of the chapter starts like they have a quote in front of oh, each yeah. chapter They're the best especially when you get to around book three and four the stuff in there is like to me it's like the most powerful stuff i've ever read um, page 409 most civilization is based on cowardice. It's so easy to civilize by teaching cowardice. You water down the standards, which would be the bravery. <laughs> Most civilization is based on cowardice. These because it, it's it's a high it's a haiku version of what's in the rest of the book. Yeah, and so, it's it's pulling from like uh from Celeste. So like in it, I think it's in the first book or the second book. There's a one of those starting quotes where it says like. 
the only thing that secures man's right to property is like the threat of violence or something like that. Like I'm not memorizing it perfectly. No, but, like, no, but that you're, line was you're like, there. I read that for the first time and I was like, what did you just say? Like, and then you think about it for more than two seconds and you're like, holy shit, dude, that is how society oh, yeah. operates. Like, so and, you know, but who really thinks that like consciously all the time? Not most people, right? Well, no, you know, he definitely was something. I will tell you that. I so mean, his writing has just, for me, it also because it, it's very deep, very deep. Well, he's he's a well-read guy uh, mm -hmm. himself, and it's crazy now since I know that and I absorbed it because oh my god, I'm 13 and I read Dune for the first time and I love science fiction. Right, that was my in for that. Right. Um, funny uh, funny story. I'm going to derail you here. I found it up in up in the second floor uh, closet at the top of the stairs. If you're eager to dive deeper into our Dune discussion, just comment more dib or something Dune related below. This will signal us that you want more. For additional Dune focused content, make sure to follow Stormcrow through the links in the bio. Dune. <laughs> Logic.